Well, well. This is not what I was expecting. Oh, seems like you've made a new discovery. This information was left by a thaumaturge called Boyang, who, as you know, is the missing ancestor that I came here to investigate. All this information... It was left by your ancestor? Hundreds of years ago, two of my ancestors, brothers, were gifted the fantastic compass by someone of great importance. They brought this device to the chasm and joined the war against the monsters of Conria. They set out together, but only one of them made it back. Minus his sanity. Karma. <sighs> Correct. One possibility is that when they fought alongside Bosatius, they were tainted by his karma. Neither of them had visions, so they wouldn't have been able to resist its effects for very long. From reading through this, it sounds like Boyong ended up staying here for good, too. <clears throat> well, this is just wonderful. So, that's it. There's no way out. I just had a thought. Give me a second. I just need to double check. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Traveler, I just realized something. Okay, so on my way here, I was studying the will the whole time, but I didn't give any thought to the book that the will was inside of. I don't know it verbatim, but I have read it before. The gist of the story goes like this. Millennia ago, an Adeptus made a magic device to seal away evil monsters. Later, he made good friends with a human and gave the device to him to use as a catalyst. A few years later, great demons haunted the mountains. The mortal and the Adeptus joined forces to exorcise them using the same device. And that's not all. The book also says this. When mortal and Adepti powers are combined, one can move the heavens and shake the earth. This contraption is proof that mortals and adepti may coexist, that there is unity between heaven and humanity. I have both adepti and human lineage. Maybe my power can work. It worked! I mean, the effect only lasted an instant because I'm not strong enough, but still, we must be on the right track. And look, something seems to have been activated inside the fantastic compass. By heaven's might and the gods of the five regions, Yaksha and mortal together take this contraption in hand. That's their voices from when they made the seal. Bosatius and my ancestor. They sealed off this space at the top together. Hmm. I see. It makes sense now. Everyone, let's go back and meet up with Ito and Shinobu. I have a suggestion to make. Paimon can barely move anymore. Oh, why can't we get out of here? Paimon doesn't want to die. Paimon wants to stay with you. Paimon, just hang in there, okay? Trust me, there's still hope. Let's go. Shinobu, Ito, we're back. He must be exhausted, because he still hasn't woken up yet. But he's not in any serious danger, so don't worry. What about you guys? You found something, didn't you? It's written on your faces. But whatever it is, it's bad news, isn't it? Um... We found the fantastic compass. The previous owner left a message inside, and from the looks of it, there really is no way out of this space after all. It seems like the previous owner was stuck here forever, too. <sighs> Shoot! This isn't over yet. Listen to me. Just now, I tried channeling my power into the fantastic compass, and it responded. But all that did was activate the records from when the seal was created. Right, but the issue wasn't with the compass. It was with the method. Remember what the book says? When mortal and adepti powers are combined, one can move the heavens and shake the earth. Only when a mortal and an adeptus combine their powers can the fantastic compass be fully activated. I'm a mix of human and adeptus, so the fact that the fantastic compass responded to me shows that the system is still functional. Lucky for us, 
We also happen to have a full Adeptus and a human with training in the magic arts. Interesting. So that's what was going through your head. So an Adeptus and a human need to channel their power at the same time? Yes, if my guess is correct, then when both of you put your full power into the Fantastic Compass, we should be able to completely reactivate it, maybe even reverse it. Last time, it was used to seal the intersection between this place and the chasm. If we can reverse it... Then we're home free. Awesome! So there's still hope? You bet. <sighs> Your idea seems reasonable. Okay, well, let's all take a quick break. We'll give this thing a try once we're ready. Oh boy, Paimon's so nervous! Yelan, Xiao, how are we looking? I'm all set. I'm ready. Oh, but Yenfei, there's one thing you might need to mentally prepare yourself for. Hmm? I'm afraid you probably won't be able to take the Fantastic Compass out of here. From what I can tell, everything within this domain is the result of disordered space-time and memories. We all came here for different purposes, and everything that's happened here has been in response to our own imaginations and conjecture. Terrifying, but also a miracle. This space... well, it's more than just a space. Whether there's some kind of higher power at work here, I don't know, but... The whole time... It's been reading our minds and responding to us in the form of illusions. Also, according to the history of the chasm, this place must have existed for a very long time. What could have created it? Oh, that. Yeah, I was there too. Huh? Wait a second. It was you that shot that arrow? Who else did you think it was? That snake is probably a remnant of Conrion's civilization, and crystals are highly effective against it. Maybe there was some sort of opposing reaction between those two forces? <sighs> if so, I'm extremely sorry, everyone. It looks like I might be the one responsible for all of this. No, no! You're just trying to help us and solve the problem! You're definitely not to blame for what happened. <laughs> if you say so. You could almost liken this bizarre space to a living being that throws all kinds of hallucinations at us to deceive us. Everyone we've seen here, and all the paths we've walked, it all ceased to exist 500 years ago. Additionally, most of the things here are static. So if we really do manage to escape... Then once time starts moving normally again, the fantastic compass will likely disappear. That's actually what I think, too. That's precisely why it's such a miracle that we even found the fantastic compass to begin with. This whole thing feels like we're breaking free from our shackles using a spear that by rights should not exist. This is a long shot, but it may be our last chance. So, whose wish was it that summoned this device? Perhaps it was. But maybe there's another reason. Your incredibly strong commitment to your search. It's a shame that we couldn't find your family. But if they were here, I'm sure they'd want nothing more than to see you being rescued from this place. I gotta say, it does intrigue me, the way we all ended up here together. If this is fate, then let's grab it in our hands and turn it around. Leave the boss to Ushi and me. We're ready. Traveler, take care of Paimon. Yenfei, you might need to come closer to me when the time comes. Sure. <sighs> <sighs> that was close. I thought you were gonna get left behind. I'm so glad you're okay. That was terrifying. <sighs> I know what you were thinking, but... Never mind. I know I can't talk you out of a mindset that's been built up over a lifetime. I don't think we were ever going to reach an agreement over the final strategy. But in the end, it was thanks to you that we managed to escape. So, thank you for saving us all. <sighs> no. 
I could not have done this on my strength alone. Don't mention it. Looks like everyone got out unscathed, but you all look pretty exhausted. Rest up. There's no hurry to move on from here. As for me, I'm gonna check the area for any unusual activity. She's gone. Paimon didn't even get to say thank you. <sighs> Maybe Aelon really doesn't believe she made a contribution. It seems like she's convinced Xiao saved us all, including her, and she doesn't know what to say to that. And since it's not easy to persuade Xiao of anything, maybe Aelon's just given up trying to talk to him. Xiao, she's criticizing you! I am not! You speak only the truth. I have no quarrel with that. I will keep your words in mind. Really? Well, that's great. I count that as quite an achievement. It was a perilous situation we were faced with underground, and it took every single one of us for any of us to make it out alive. I feel lucky that we didn't lose anyone along the way. Hey, so... Bull Checker still hasn't woken up yet. Surely he's not gonna stay asleep forever, is he? Let's go check on him. I <sighs> slept like a rock. Ugh, good times. Huh? Whoa, what you doing? What's going on? Why are you looking at me like that? Are you in any pain? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. The head? What about it? Is there any brain damage from the impact? You need to tell us if you're not feeling well. You weren't that bright to begin with, so if we add brain damage to the equation... Oh, brother. The heck are you guys talking about? I'm fine! I had an epic power nap, and now I feel like a million mora. Huh, I feel like I'm forgetting something, though. Uh... Oh, yeah! Wait, weren't we underground? How did we get back up here? It's a long story. We'll fill you in later. Ito, we're indebted to you, Shinobu, and Ushi. We couldn't have escaped this predicament without your help. I'm the reason you all got caught up in this. Please accept my apologies, and let me find some way to compensate you for the trouble. Bah, crazy talk! You helped us first! Of course we're gonna return the favor. Hey, if it weren't for you, we'd still be in a Liyue jail cell right now. That's not quite correct. You'd be in jail, not me. Mm. <laughs> Good point. Well, okay then. How about this? To celebrate our newfound friendships, how about you let me take you to Leo Harbor for some sightseeing and a proper meal? I like the sound of that. Now that you mention it, whew, I am famished. Oh, I can barely walk here. I'm hungry too, Senpai. Why don't we head straight over? Paimon too! Paimon wants to come too! Huh? Uh, fine! All right, well, I promise I'll take good care of your friends from Inazuma. Take it easy, okay? What we just went through was... a lot. <laughs> oh, wait! Yelan left already. I was gonna treat her to some tea. But I'll take this to mean we're square. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm? Oh, yeah? Is that right? Wow. Okay, I'll let him know. Traveler, Flying Lavender Melon, Ushi has a couple words he'd like you to pass on for him. What? Oh, I want to hear this. Me too. Count me in. Good idea! Let's do that! Paimon never would have guessed that Ushi was so gentle and thoughtful. Never judge a bull by its cover, huh? Oh. <sighs> Sometimes the profoundest truths can also be the simplest. I think Ushi's words may well come in handy. You betcha! Just leave it to us! All right, Ito, Shinobu, Ushi, let's go. Oh, yeah! Grub time! Mm. See you next time. 
<sighs> Finished taking care of business? Oh, there wasn't any business. We were just saying goodbye to our friends. <laughs> You're still here. I saw the two Inazumans leave with Yenfei, heading towards Liyue Harbor. Aren't you going with them? We still had some stuff we wanted to say to Xiao. Hmm, I figured as much. I've checked the area. Nothing strikes me as out of the ordinary. Looks like this chapter has come to a close. Now, I just need to take care of the confidentiality issues. <laughs> Let's hope our friends from overseas can keep their mouths shut. For their own sakes. Uh, we got it! We got it! We'll make sure they don't say anything! Please don't hurt them. Oh. You figured me out, huh? <laughs> All right, I'll quit pulling your leg. Everyone really rose to the occasion this time. I won't ever forget what we went through. Where could that strange space have come from? And how has it existed down there undetected for so many years? If I have to investigate this further, I have a feeling that whatever lies behind all this runs deep. Maybe so deep that no one can be allowed to know. Also... I think someone helped us out at the last minute. They did a good deed, of course, but... Somehow I couldn't tell anything about them. It must have been someone of great importance. <sighs> anyway, these questions will have to wait for another time. I have some follow-up work to do and reports to make. So it's back to Liyue Harbor for me. See you when I see you. Bye, Yelan! You knew I was waiting for you? Really? Hmm. <laughs> There's somewhere I want to go. If you have the time, you can join me. Where is it? A place that has to do with the Yakshas. The temple up ahead was built to remember Pervases. Maybe I came here because I had a realization. You mean, back when we were underground? It's hard to put into words. Seeing Bosatius gave me the false impression that I'd traveled back into the past. You could dress up the Yaksha's life and call us valiant warriors, veterans of war. But the truth is, we are slaughterers and nothing more. For Bosatius, perhaps dying in the heat of a great battle was no tragedy. And perhaps the same is true for me. After living so long... To die in the act of saving others would not have been a terrible thing. Hmm. So maybe... These thoughts are my own form of insanity. Hey, don't say that. Oh, yeah! Ushi wanted us to tell you. It's very important. Hmm? Ushi said he has the power to exercise demons, so people use him to fend them off. After he met Ito, he's never left his side. He also said that he doesn't have any grand philosophies. He just thinks we should spend our lives around the people who make us happiest. Maybe there aren't so many rules about how we should or shouldn't live our lives in this world after all. So, he hopes you can come to understand that even though the power of a yaksha may be harmful to other people, it doesn't mean you shouldn't hang out with them. Yep, like people with visions. They have more resistance against your power, right? And, and, well, anyway, there's loads of people out there who really care about you. <sighs> Suddenly you sound a lot like Bosatius and the others. They used to talk about how they hoped to live a mortal's life once the world was at peace. I think... I was the only one who didn't think that way. The Bosatius recorded in the Fantastic Compass had lost his sanity. He addressed the people around him as Alatus, Minogius, and others. These are the names of the five Yakshas. I am Alatus, and Minogius is General Capesis. The others are Bonanus, or General Chizapis, and Indarius, or General Musatis. I heard that people call the five of us Yakshas, the Guardian Adepti. <laughs> Bosatius and Yelan's ancestors stayed underground to the end. 
So that space must have read their minds in their last moments as they approached death. Yalon was right in everything she said. Both of our proposals had their drawbacks, and both were sensible suggestions. But the power of that space was far beyond all of us. I couldn't have done all I did without everyone's help. Even in the final moments, it took every bit of my power to break free from that place. Well, Paimon still thinks you were amazing. Yenfei and Yalon are correct. I always prepare for the worst-case scenario. This mindset is deeply rooted in me. Even so, it was the most optimistic solution I could think of. If Rex Lapis hadn't saved me in that moment, I don't think I would have been able to escape. In the end, I still had to burden another. But that's how it should be, right? You've known Zhang Li... Uh... Rex Lapis for such a long time, and you've helped him before, so he helped you back. What's the big deal? Perhaps. In the moment that we escaped from that space, I could sense what was left of Bosatius's memory. If I had to say what I gained from this trip, I think that would be it. It's good that one more person will remember him. I've said so much today, but... I don't need to hold back as much when I talk to you. Have you ever had a moment where you felt like you were aware of your destiny? The potential of life? The approach of death? Whatever it might have been. By now, I have accepted that destiny is the one disaster that the Yaksha know most keenly of all. We are destined to misery. And yet, we have no fear. Xiao... It matters not. Rex Lapis had said that you are a witness. It is right that the events of the world are relayed to you. Bonanus, Minogius, and Indarius all perished, and only Bosatius' fate was unknown. This has always stung my heart like a thorn. That is why I went to the chasm, despite being fully aware of the danger. Now that I know what happened in the chasm back then, I can finally put this matter to rest. Before we left that place, I picked up a stone. I thought if I could take it out with me, I would place it in the temple to Pervases in memory of Bosatius. Unfortunately, the stone did not survive. Pervases died in the Archon War thousands of years ago. He was younger than us. And Bosatius was very sad when he passed. Too many Yakshas have become casualties of battle. We are like a flock of birds, scattered to the four corners of the world. And in the end, as Bonana said, it's rare for a Yaksha to find repose for their soul. Bosatius, Boyang, and all those soldiers. Heroes. I like that word. Maybe the world will never be free of disaster. But there is good in the world, too. Even the darkest hearts have room for those they cherish. I accept your advice. From this day on, heroes will always look out for each other.